Hey there everyone, welcome back on board the Bitcoin SV train. Now, there's been a lot of buzz around the Bitcoin SV community, or I probably should say Bitcoin SV society, about something called Paymail, and also just a little bit of controversy. So I'm making this video to explain a little bit about what Paymail is, what it does, and what it doesn't do, and what we can expect it to be in the future. I hope this clears a few things up. So Paymail was announced at the CoinGeek conference in Toronto in May 2019. According to the announcement it was, developed collaboratively with top BSV developers, including Enchain, MoneyButton, Handcash, and Electrum SV. It will benefit the entire Bitcoin SV ecosystem. It emerged from a workshop of the Bitcoin Association. Sounds pretty good, but what would it actually look like and how would it function? To put it way too simple, Paymail is something that looks like an email address that's assigned to a Bitcoin public key. It saves you having to copy paste or, oh god forbid, type out that entire string of letters and numbers for your Bitcoin address. Money Button described it like this. Paymail is a solution to the identity problem. It is a way of attaching human readable names to authenticated services, enabling signatures, encryption, and legal contracts on chain. Now, there was some confusion over what a Paymail ID actually is. If you register a name with a service, what does it actually do and what do you get for it? Okay, let's check out an overview of what Paymail actually consists of over at bsvalias.org. This is what the devs say. It says, Paymail is a collection of protocols for Bitcoin SV wallets that allow for a set of simplified user experiences to be delivered across all wallets in the ecosystem. So yeah, no more complicated addresses. They were described as human readable names that look exactly like email addresses. The goals of the payment protocol are user-friendly payment destinations through memorable handles, permissionless implementation, self-hosted or delegated to a managed service, automatic service discovery, location, PKI infrastructure, that's public key infrastructure, cross-wallet exchange of single-use transaction output scripts of any construction, request and response authentication, security and policy management, capability, extensibility, and discovery. So you can find out more about that by checking out bsvalias.org yourself if you want the details. So basically, it's a much easier way of sharing your public key or address. Now, you can do that with a handcash wallet, which has been pretty popular so far, just by showing people your handcash handle. But that only works if uh, both users are using a handcash wallet. The idea of Paymail is that you could send to any Paymail ID, provided the service you're using has implemented that set of protocols. So while Paymail does make things a lot easier, it's not actually a fully portable ID system, and more importantly, nor is it email. Paymail requires the services to actually implement the set of protocols. So far, the only one who's done that is Money Button, but uh, we're expected to see other services like Handcash, uh, Electrum SV, and SentB implement their own versions soon. So technically, that means an existing email service with millions of users around the world could implement their own version of Paymail, such as say, Gmail or even Yahoo Mail. And if they did that, then yes, sending a Bitcoin payment would be as easy as sending an email. However, that is dependent on whether the service is actually implemented or not. It would be an extremely big deal if they did, but I guess we'll have to wait and see whether they do, fingers crossed. So what are these Paymail IDs that everyone's talking about buying? You've probably seen them around a few times. So Paymail is a specification and all the various services will run implementations of it. Therefore, you would need to register a new Paymail ID for every service you use. For example, if I have Bitcoin SV train at moneybutton.com, that's not the same as Bitcoin SV train at handcash.io. They'll need to be registered separately. And I can do that provided that no one else has already registered the name. I should note again that yes, you could send payments from one of those addresses to the other, provided both of those services have implemented the protocols. So here's where we get to the slightly controversial bits, although how controversial they are just depends on how you see the roles of businesses and users within the community. I mean, society. So Money Button was the first service to actually start registering Paymail IDs, and as such it uh, probably got most of the positive and some of the negative attention. One of the issues was that Money Button was selling all of its name for $1, although it did say that if you could 
proof that your money button handle was well known on social media and it was the one that everyone knew you by, you could register that one for 10 cents. As far as I know, not many people did that. They just paid the dollar and got the name. You could technically register any name or word you wanted, although if a name was more common or popular or more obviously famous, then you would find that the prices for that were set much higher than a dollar. Another issue is Money Button's namespace marketplace. You are allowed to transfer Money Button at moneybutton.com paymail IDs between users. But if you do, and if you charge money for that, then Money Button will take 30% of the sale. And Handcash is taking a slightly different approach. They've said that they'll offer paymail IDs to their users with their handle names for free coming July. Handcash founder Alex Agut described it like this. You'll get one for free with your current handle. Some might think we're leaving money on the table, but we just want to focus on utility and simplicity. We've always tried to distance Handcash from speculation. Heck, I would even pay you not to use the goddamn legacy addresses. So please, people, stop using the goddamn legacy addresses. Now, I did see an earlier message from Handcash that said that they would give away at handcash.io addresses to existing users for free if someone else hadn't already bought it. Uh, that needs to be further clarified, and it's important to remember that Handcash has not actually implemented PayMail yet. That's not coming until their next version in July. So it's possible that they haven't figured out 100% how they're going to handle that yet. Now, in the days that followed, there was a little bit of internet drama over the way Money Button handled the whole registration and sales process. Now, when people logged into Money Button, they found that they'd received a free PayMail ID, but it was their four-digit user ID rather than their actual name or handle. You could then choose any word or name that was available, whether it was yours or not, and buy it for a dollar or more, as we said before. Now, for the people who heard about this first, this led to a kind of uh, namespace land grab, just like we saw in the early dot-com days. The ones who spend a lot of time monitoring Bitcoin SV news and information were able to jump on the popular names and start grabbing them first. And others who heard about it a little bit later logged into their Money Button accounts and found out that their username had already been bought by someone else. There were some people who felt that Money Button shouldn't be charging for names at all, that they should be giving them away for free, and this led to the usual tech debate over whether for-profit companies in the, in the tech community should be acting like capitalists or whether they should be acting like good community members. Money Button explained it all in a blog post they published later saying uh, why we charge for usernames, and basically, as we said, the rule was to stop bots from sweeping in and grabbing all the popular names to make it at least a little bit expensive for them. And of course, Money Button is making money for this, and they are taking 30% of the sale if the names are transferred as well. So if in future we find a scenario where some names actually are selling for millions of dollars, then taking 30% of that sale would make Money Button a lot of money. However, that is dependent on whether the names actually retain their high value well into the future. Does anyone remember Namecoin back in the day? A lot of people paid a lot of money for those names too. There was also a slightly smaller issue with Money Button's registration code where you were, it would tell you that you'd registered a name, but it had actually registered a truncated version of the name. We see the same thing in Twitter. If you try to register a name that's way too long, it, uh, it tells you you registered it, but you'll find it's actually shortened version of what you thought. Although in Money Button's case, it said that it was indeed a bug and that it's being fixed now. The drama continued when a few representatives from other Bitcoin SV services weighed in with their opinions on what Money Button should and shouldn't have done, although, although I think that's calmed down a fair bit now. Some users said that Money Button simply could have handled things a little bit better. And for the record, Handcash's Alex Agut did say that what Money Button did was totally legit in his opinion, although he did sympathize with some of the organizations who found that their names had already been taken, and then promised that Handcash users wouldn't have that problem. So I'm not going to give you my personal opinion on all that. I'm not running a business in this industry, and I don't have any investors to please or users to satisfy, so I'll leave that up to the people who do. Maybe, as we said before, Money Button could have reserved its users' names and offered it to them first, you know, for a certain period of time, just to see if they wanted it or not, and give them the chance to hear about it, because the, the news spread pretty fast 
and those names got snapped up pretty fast as well. Even I didn't hear about it until much later. But at the end of the day, all of these services do cost a lot of money to develop, produce, release, debug, and we want them to be as well designed and as secure as possible. And of course, as users, everyone has the freedom to decide which service they use or don't use, or whether they use Bitcoin at all. So anyway, I hope that makes the whole issue of PayMail and the surrounding conversation just a little bit clearer and easier to follow for you all. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. And also, I hope to be bringing you a lot more of these Bitcoin SV news and informational videos in the future. So if you've got a topic that you think needs more explaining or more investigation, get in touch with me and let me know. See you again next time.